Welcome, everyone, back to the School of Greatness podcast. Got a good buddy of mine, Tim Sykes, in the house. Good to see you, bro. Thanks for having me. We're just talking about our age. You'll be 36 in April. I'm 35 right now. <laughs> That's what we were discussing. Stop I'll be, going to the future. I'll Live be, in the present, Lewis. <laughs> yes, I'll be 34 in March. And we met probably like six or seven years ago, right? Something like that. I think we met in Time Warner Center. Do you I, remember this for like brunch or something? Is that what we first met? I don't remember. No, we actually, young bucks. We were you know in our 20s. I first met you. What? Actually, I take it back. I first met you at some blogging conference in either Vegas or New York or an affiliate Blog conference. Expo. Dude, Blog Expo. And you were talking oh, yeah. about membership sites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I vaguely remember this. Yeah, it had to be 2009, 2010. Yeah. And, wow. Look and, at your memory. And then we met at the Time Warner Center for like brunch at one of those like unhealthy brunch places looking over mm. like the Whole Foods. Like yeah. we were looking at good food, but we ate like bad yeah. food or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've been uh, buddies for a while. I think you have um, – you've created an incredible brand for yourself. You've done extremely well financially. For those that don't know who Tim is, he is a penny stock trader. Is kind of like your day job, let's say. But you – you do it yourself, and then you teach others how to do it. But you do much more than that. You give a lot of money that you make away. And how much have you given away in the last year? Um, so, I mean, I started the Timothy Sykes Foundation yeah. about well, like a year and a half ago. But the charity world is is very hit or miss. There's yes. a lot of charities that, you know, I don't want to just give money to like, oh, like for charities, it'll do good. Like there's a lot of charities that don't manage their money properly, and they don't give properly. So... I, I was very hesitant at first. They're, they're run by people who aren't business people. And right. so they're run by people who like just have these lofty like dreams of like helping, but they don't yeah. know how to run yeah. business. A lot of right. idealists. And yes. it's it's good to be an idealist, but I want the money, you know, doing good. I, I we didn't work this hard to make this money <laughs> just to like throw it into the air and sing kumbaya. Uh, so <laughs> I'm I'm sorry to the charity world. It's very different than the business world. So yes. it took me a little while. But now um, you know, in the past year and a half we've given away you know, close to $2 million. Yeah. Um, and we're just getting started. We're, we're literally just ramping. Like it took a solid nine months of research, like little investments, uh, little donations, just trying to see what charity is best and, and has the most scalability and is the most effective. Mm. So it's like stock research. It takes time. Mm. Now, why did you start the Timothy Sykes Foundation in the first place? Um, you know, I've done well in the stock market. Um, I've done well in the, in the coaching and teaching business and, you know, I, I like making money. I'm a capitalist. I'm not like a communist, but at the same time, it's kind of cool to give back. And, and, you know, I didn't just start giving back now. I mean, I donated to, uh, Tulane university. I have a scholarship there. Wow. I actually donated while I was in college, kind of really? helped me graduate college, um, <laughs> wow. on that thing. And then also, you know, I, I, Play, took this philanthropy class at Tulane. And so I was a wish grantor for make a wish. Um, so I've been granting wishes and, and donating to make a wish for, I mean, over a decade and they're a fantastic organization. Um, but then I wanted my own like formal charity, like a 501 C three charity mm. so that we can really, you know, give and, and do better um, rather than just me personally giving. So we created this wow. charity organization and now, you know, it's an official thing where we have like several people who actually help research and, give donations. And do you have a, a goal each year of how much you want to give or is it based on percentages of what you make or? I mean, it's, it's, it's not just money. Like I, I know a lot of people like that's the headline number. Like, Oh, we want to talk about money. Like I'm here to, to really frankly announce the fact that I'm donating a million dollars to pencils of promise. That's a big headline number. That's fantastic. This is my first seven figure donation, but it's about what can this number do? What can your money do? Mm -hmm. And even if you don't have money, what can, you know, you do to help an organization? So, I know making a million dollars, donating a million dollars, fantastic stuff, but it's not just about money and, and your listeners and your viewers out there, I don't know which camera to look into. You're good there. This one, yes. you guys can help even if you don't have a million dollars. Um, the charity world needs volunteers mm -hmm. and expertise. You know, a lot of people think like, oh, you just have to like go feed people at soup kitchens or give money. Like there's a whole thing in between yeah. and pencils of promise has become my favorite charity. Yeah. Um, they have a lot of business people, you know, they manage it very well. They have Bain, you know, ex Bain people who are in like VC and private Big equity. advisory board of experts. Yeah. You're on the advisory board. <laughs> yeah. You're a so lifetime you. member. I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I'm a new advisory board <laughs> yes. member. Yes. Um, so it's about just, you know, 
doing what's best and, and trying to give back. And so mm -hmm. I actually created a DVD. I have several DVDs, training guides in the stock market, but I made this one guide called How to Make Millions. If you go to howtomakemillions.com, all of this guide goes to charity. And I spent nearly a year making this guide. Wow. I don't make a dime off of it. And this one guide has become my best-selling guide. Really? It's 35 hours long, all for charity. So I like to teach and give back. And then I also make you know some money in the stock market and make some money coaching too. But right. it's more fulfilling. you yeah. know. I mean, I, I just got a new Lamborghini. I have my Ferrari. It's it gets old after you travel a while. to every beautiful I place travel, in the world. I've been to 106 countries now. I'm going to wow. Cambodia wow. next month and the Philippines. That's a new country. Every now and then I like to add a new country. <laughs> but uh, you've seen everything beautiful. You've tried every. Uh, I haven't been to Australia yet. Australia what? and New Zealand. I know. I know. Oh my gosh. The amazing. time zone is tough for the stock market. So I've avoided <laughs> like tough time zones. I just got, got back from Laos, you know, with Pencils yes. of Promise and Japan. I took my family there. They'd never been to Asia before. My parents got sick, but wow. you know they're not used to it. So. Sure, sure. It was interesting. But you, you've bought everything expensive that you could buy with your money. Yeah. You've traveled first class and private jets all over the world. You've uh, been in the most exclusive restaurants in the world. You've yeah. got, ex you've had expensive clothes and watches and cars. You tried all the toys, and at the end of the day, you it's still boring. feel it's boring. It's fun for a little bit, but it's boring. I still have fun. Like yeah. my new Lamborghini is fun, but it's not what's fulfilling. You, you know? don't need 10 Lamborghinis. You don't. You know? You really don't. <laughs> and, you know, you just need to figure out what makes you happy and what fulfills you in this life. Mm. And, you know, giving back to others and charity and seeing the world. Once you start seeing the world, I think more people should travel because it'll open up their whole perspective. You know, seeing kids who have no shoes and they're, you know, taping plastic water bottles to the mm -hmm. bottom of their feet so that their feet don't get too hot on the hot ground. Like, it blows your mind, and most people don't get to experience that. I mean, we complain about stupid things like we have no Wi-Fi, like we have slow service, you know, someone <laughs> – like there's traffic, and we're, we don't realize – Disconnected. Yeah, we live in a bubble. Yeah. And once you travel, especially to these third-world countries, you really opens your mind up, yeah. and then – you know, you start viewing life a little differently. You have more compassion and it makes you a better person. So it's not just about giving back to others. It's about, you know, learning what really completes you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of selfish. You know, I'm trying it is. to, it's I'm, the most fulfilling thing there is. It is. I'm trying to figure out what makes me happy and fulfilled It is giving more and giving more. So, uh. you know, it's not like, Oh, you're such a good person. Like I'm just trying to be happy here. Mm. Like I think everyone's trying to be happy, but most people in New York and LA and Miami and the bubble that we kind of yeah. live in, they get happy with like prescription drugs and, you know, material things. Yes. And I know a lot of people on Wall Street, they make much more money than I do, but they're not happy. And they're slaves to their job and they're slaves to their location. Like they have to, you know, wear these fancy suits. They have to be in their office. They have to work specific hours because if they don't, someone else is, you know, more than willing to take advantage of that. So mm -hmm. for me, I'd actually like to personally make less profits myself and live and enjoy and learn what makes me happy. That's why mm -hmm. when I travel to these countries, I'm stock trading, I'm teaching. When I was in Laos, everyone in the charity thought I was insane because we're doing charity work. We're visiting these schools during the day. I'm trading stocks at night. Everyone else is sleeping. I, I minimize my sleep a little bit, but I loved every second of it. So wow, you, you just have to find what fulfills you. Yeah. And you're also, I think, a slave to the pressures of your peers in those locations if you're like – in this fancy job in Wall Street or something, you're you've got to have the nice car, you've got to get the next nice thing in order to like kind of keep up with your friends. Otherwise, you're judged or you're looked down on or whatever, right? Yeah, it's well, pressures. I think a lot of people worry too much about what other people in their industry, you know, think and, and mm -hmm. other people think. Yeah, I think people do need to be more selfish. You know, they need to focus on what makes them happy, and they'll be surprised. I think what the answer is. And, you know, we need to get more exposure for charities. That's what it comes mm. down to. Like, I post all these pictures and videos on social media. Some people are like, you should just give and be quiet. And I'm like, <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm proud of it. It's my yeah. project. Like, I'm very happy to share it. And some of my followers have donated money now, too. Um, but it, yeah. I wish that I could find mm. the words to share, like, how it makes you feel when you help these people who have so little. I mean, Pencils yeah. of Promise – I mean, you've been to Laos. Yep. I saw your tags on Instagram. Yes. You and me, we have photos next <laughs> to each other, and you were there a year before me. Um, right. But, like, these kids have nothing, and, and you literally give them one pencil. And think about giving somebody a pencil here in the U.S. Like, they'd they'd like trash what, it. what is this? Yeah, they would trash it. And there the kids, I mean, the, the, yeah. uh, the charity people gave me, like, 
50 pencils and I was going to give them out. And the kids were hesitant. And I was like, come on. And they were going crazy for these pencils. And I had no idea. And, you know, we were supposed to be like an organized line. I, I kind of screwed up. <laughs> there you but, go. <laughs> but it was just like I, I would not have expected – kids or anybody to be so overwhelmed with pencils and it mm. makes you realize you know the little things really matter mm. to other people and it brings them so much joy so much joy and it makes a big impact they have nothing too. and they're still so happy yeah and we have so much and the vast majority of us are so unhappy so you need to if you're unhappy out there you need to like think a little different you know mm -hmm. so i i teach stock trading i teach that that's cool I teach soon to be blogging. You know, I'm going to get into that business with Blog Millionaire. So I basically built a nice little business yeah. uh, blogging. But aside from just the money that you can make, what can you do with your life? What is it? What What is your life Experiences, about? Experiences, What is your life about? Yeah, it's about What do you think your life is about? Personally, it's yeah. from my mission is to impact 100 million people, to show them how to make Why only 100 million? To start. Okay, good. That's just the goal good. to start. All right. Just yeah, put that in there. there. I want you to get more ambitious. Hey, I, I feel like it's a big goal right now. And once I hit it, then I can recreate a new dream. How do you know if you've reached 100 million people? I mean, I'm tracking it through different ways, through download numbers, through book sales, through yeah. course sales, through speaking gigs, things like that. It's not going to be an exact science, yeah. but it's going to be a rough estimate of yeah. how many people we reach and who are going through the information and the products and the systems. Um, but I think for me, that gives me something measurable to to reach towards and to build towards yeah and why because i feel like when people make when they're doing what they love a majority of the time and they make a full-time income doing the thing they love i feel they take care of their health better they take care of the people in their lives better they're more rewarding rewarded fulfilled they're more inspiring to be around and that for me is a good life because they're now a complete person the sad yes. fact is that most people never get the opportunity to be complete, to even mm -hmm. have the ability to find out what they love because they're working. You know, they have bills to pay. They have responsibilities. 75% mm -hmm. of people hate their jobs and they're spending the vast majority of their life at these jobs that they hate. So it's right. like this cycle, you know, with yeah. the student loans and the debts and the mortgages and you can't break out of the cycle. Like they listen to your podcast. They're inspired. But what I wish that they could do is study outside their jobs you know mm. like listen to your podcast read your book like read my stuff outside of your working hours and yeah. that way at night on weekends you just learn a little bit and you grow your mind and you say wait a minute i can make a little extra side money maybe part-time mm -hmm. doing different stuff on the internet this is a technological revolution after all yes. and then you can eventually gradually hopefully get out of the cycle get out of the rat race and then focus on what you love mm -hmm. and learn to focus on what you love. Most people don't even have that ability. I'm very fortunate. You're very fortunate. We've been to Laos. We have the ability to leave. Yeah. You know, most people, I, they would love to go to Laos or wherever, right. but they can't. They have their job. So you have to look at the cycle that most people are in, and I think we have to break it. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to education. And thanks to the internet and thanks to these tools that are brand new in the past decade that never existed before, people can learn from anywhere. I'm very proud. I have students in over 80 countries. Wow. And I have a few millionaire students, but I have more upcoming. And it starts with asking yourself a question. What can I do to be happy? How can I get there? How can I have more time to find out what makes me happy? A few mm. questions, not just one question. I like those. Now, how many millionaire students do you have? Uh, right now, we have five. Um, five students. So it means five students have gone through, signed up for one of your programs, and started with a bank account, and then grew it to over a million dollars in profit through penny stock trading. Correct. And even though, you know, penny stock trading is looked down upon by the whole world, pretty much a lot of what my top students do is short sell. So they, they bet against them because a lot of these companies are very kind of sketchy companies mm. and they're bound to go down. And a lot of people don't want to think about this like, oh, this hurts my head, like taking a negative position, betting against crappy companies. But that's what I teach. I, it, it's a strategy. You know, you can make money on the way up and you can make money on the way down. Mm. We don't make money all the time. But a few of these students have breached the seven figure mark, just like wow. I have. Now I have actually two students, Stephen Ducks and Mark Crook, who have each now made $600,000 in a few years. In a few so years. It takes time. It's not yeah. like overnight. It's not like, oh, you're going to be a millionaire after day one or week one or month one or even year one. Mm -hmm. But you learn the strategy, you learn the intricacies, you see where the opportunities are, and that's how you get financial freedom. Mark right. Crook, not a millionaire, my student, but because he's made think like $670,000 now. He's made 25,000 in the past two days. I just talked with wow. him. I was like, calm down, stop. <laughs> and he's like, but I could have made 40,000. I was like, you made 25,000 in two days. That's, Take it. Yeah, yeah. You're fine. <laughs> calm down. 
<laughs> and you know, he used to work at a cubicle job in Texas. He hated it. He was, I think, an accountant. Now he's moved to Miami, met the love of his life. They just got married. I went to their wedding. Beautiful wow. affair. And, you know, six figures changes your life. So a lot of people out there think that they need to make like 100 million or like 50 million. You don't. Right. I've met people with 50 or 100 million. They're screwed up in the head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've met billionaires. Like you can barely talk to them. They're yeah. so alien compared right, to the right. rest of us because of how much money they have. I don't yeah. want that. So it's also another good thing. If you do get that rich, give it away. Yeah. Give a lot of it away because, you know, there's you don't like, need it. You don't need it and you shouldn't want it because it's going to mess with you. Like I know yeah. so many people who have 50, 100, 200 million. They are not happy. It goes back to the whole happiness thing. Mm. A lot of people who don't even have a million or don't have, you know, 10,000. Half of America doesn't even have $10,000 to their name. And they think that you need all this money and then your problems are solved and you're happy. You look at the lotto winners. They're not happy. Right. Lotto winners, by and large, are not very good yeah. in life. Hollywood stars, when they're kids stars, they're screwed up. When they're Disney people, they're screwed up. Mm. So you start to look, what can I do to get happy? It's not just about money. It's about you know self-sufficiency and finding yourself. And for me, it's not, you know, I took 12,000. I'm now at 4.5 million in trading profits. That's cool. But the journey along the way helped me find myself and build myself. And I chose not to work on Wall Street, but to travel all over the world because I love that personally. Yeah. Do you love to travel? Love it, man. Love it. How many, how many months on the road are you? traveling um the year. i mean i go back and forth it, it just depends on the city it, it just depends on the time yeah. uh like i'm two weeks i'm going to be in cambodia i have another school opening with the cambodian village fund Amazing. um this has been a year in development so they just told me like a date this is when the school will be right. opening so you go to check it out yeah so i'm going to cambodia and then i'm i'm adding the philippines because i've never been there so wow. that's going to be kind of cool very so cool yeah try different stuff but see how it feels yeah. i want more people thinking like scientists like testing 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 refining 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 but you got to break the rat race rat race cycle where, right, where it's right. just like money is going to solve everything it won't yeah i hear you even though i teach how to make money that's you know it, it's kind of contradictory some people are like well why do you focus well, you want to so make much? money to have some flexibility and freedoms in your life exactly you need to get everything you need to get out of you know working for somebody else's dreams so if you have a little savings or some money then you're working on your own dreams right right, right. exactly now talking about penny stocks for a moment yeah why is this so looked down upon do you think uh wolf of wall street is like something that's brought it more to light or and made it even worse or um i mean it's always happened i mean penny stocks are small companies under five dollars a share they're very speculative like you have a lot of degenerate gamblers trading this stuff thinking oh this is the next microsoft it right, never right. is so they look at it like these long-term investments which you never ever should look at any penny stock or really any stock in particular as a long-term investment. 70% wow. of all stocks drop every year. People don't even realize this. Really? The stock market is like one giant casino, you could say, but also it's geared towards insiders and companies. Why, do, why does a company become a public stock? Because they need to raise money. Why do they need to raise money? Maybe their competitors are getting ahead of them. Snapchat, you know, Instagram is crushing them with Instagram stories right yeah. now. So Snapchat has to go public they're not necessarily going to be the best company to invest in, even though their product is hot. Financially speaking, they're not good. Penny stocks are even smaller. They only have one or two products. They're not, they don't have billions of users like Snapchat or Facebook. So they're very speculative companies. So what you have to do is look at them properly. And what my top students and I have learned to do, even though we don't win every time, you know, get that out of your head right, thinking right. like, oh, you're going to win all the time. What's your winning percentage? So right now? I've, I win roughly 74% of the time. Um, but when I'm wrong, I cut my losses quickly. So that's mm. it, a lot of it is just discipline and, and rules. You know, like if you're on your diet, you're on your diet right now, you, you stick to the rules. If you're trading stocks, you stick to the rules. Like sometimes I'm wrong and the stock goes against me. A lot of people have that problem where the stock is going against them and then they add and they add to their position because no. they don't want to lose because their ego gets involved. With me, if I lose, Kay. I have to share everything publicly. I share every single trade in real time, transparently. Sometimes I look like a freaking idiot where the <laughs> stock just goes against me right away. But that's good for me because I learned to cut my losses quickly. Mm -hmm. Take a small loss, move on. Something I thought about, something in my thesis was wrong. And I move on and I live to fight yeah. another day. Yeah, I see you posting all the losses on Instagram and yeah. Twitter. You're like, I just lost a thousand a day or I made six grand a day. Yeah. And uh, I think it's cool that you're showing your you're showing your life of what's happening in real time. Well, that's the key. It's, it's all transparency on the internet. And, and you've, you've learned this. You've built mm. your brand based on transparency. There's a lot of people doing podcasts and stuff like that. But you've been more transparent than most and yes. more inspirational than most. 
the more honest you can be with your following and your social media, the better. Obviously, there's limits. You know, you, you got to right. work on privacy a little bit. I have to work on privacy. I overshare sometimes yeah. too much. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that. But just be real. That's the secret mm. to success on the internet. Just be real. There's so many scams. There's so many sketchy people. Like they, they're trying to make all this money in like affiliate business and, and network marketing yeah. in like one year. And then they burn their whole email list and they yeah. burn everybody with these crap products and no one wants to come back to them. I've been teaching now for eight years and our business is doubling every year because we're just real. We don't say, oh, can you guarantee me profits? No, I can't guarantee you profits. I can guarantee you knowledge and I can guarantee you education. I can teach you every single thing that I've learned from 18 years of stock trading. And while I can't guarantee your success, education is your only chance. If you don't have education, if you don't study the past, what are you doing? Then you're truly gambling. So all I can do is teach and teach honestly. And frankly, I'm very fortunate to have dedicated students. All of my millionaire students and six-figure students, they study so much. I have 4,000 video lessons now. I make a you're video machine, lesson every dude. single day. You're a machine, man. But I, I find... I find education everywhere. Like if I have a good trade, if I have a bad trade, here are five lessons. Here are good takeaways from my good trade. Here are takeaways from my bad trade. I'm basically just a glorified history teacher. Yeah. And if you study the past, that's your key to your future. But most people don't want to study the past. They just want hot stock picks. Like it's, I, don't, I don't want to put in 45 minutes to learn about this company. Just tell me a company to buy. No, that's the wrong attitude. There's a lot of people who make hot picks out there. There's an mm -hmm. ugly bald guy on CNBC. He's right about 35% of the time. His numbers are crashing because he's just hot picks. You're giving mm -hmm. into the gamblers. So, so you he, do a lot of research for all your picks or research and just mindset and, and mm -hmm. positioning. Like all of these students, you know, they've been with me for years. They watch every single thing. They learn from their gains. They learn from their losses. And you have to realize that that's kind of like life. You know, we, we all make mistakes along the way. Too many of us are too hard on ourselves, I think. When you have a mistake, not just in the stock market, but just in life, and you, you know, you screw up and you're like, get down on yourself for, I see people get down on themselves for weeks or months and they're, they're you know, they turn to drinking or they, they can't like have any confidence in themselves whatsoever. Even if you're the most successful person in the world, even if you're a millionaire or a billionaire or forget about money, just have had success in whatever industry, you make mistakes. What the most successful people have learned to do is learn from those mistakes. You don't want to make a mistake and try to forget about it and then have it happen again and again and again throughout your life. I make a mistake. I write a whole blog post about it. Here's my stupid mistake <laughs> so that all my followers can see I'm not that smart. I'm not that great at math, but I'm real. And if you're trying to build a business on the internet, actually what I think people should share more of their mistakes and lessons learned along the way, the hard fought lessons, because that's what gets, you know, people really loyal, like, whoa, this, this guy's different. He's not like winning hundred percent of the time. He's sharing mm -hmm. everything. And this goes with everybody, you know, even in, in charity world, there are mistakes that are made. Yep. And on Wall Street, there's tons of mistakes that are made, but no one wants to admit it because they are afraid of it making them look bad and then losing that business to somebody else. Right. What they don't realize is that because everybody thinks like this, it creates this whole alternate reality where everyone thinks that they have to be perfect all the time. You don't. It's okay to lose. Which camera is it? No, either one. You, it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay to lose. It's okay to make mistakes. True success you know, takes time. I mean, your podcast, how many years have you been doing this? Four years next week. And I saw you do, I saw, I think it was an Instagram story where you talked about like the growth. It's yeah. a marathon. Yeah. You didn't have success right away, yeah. but you kept going. We're episode four, 400 plus 30 something. Yeah. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. And you're learning and you've gotten better. And now I feel like I'm in a helicopter <laughs> and your studio's gotten better, but you optimize over mm. time. And no matter what, anybody out there is listening, no matter what industry they're in, you have to test and you're fine over time and you have to stick with it. Too many people give up too quickly. They try something new and they're like, oh, this feels weird. I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I made a mistake. I lost like in the stock market or, you know, if they start a pod, their own podcasting channel and they're like, I spent all this time on this podcast and only three listeners. Okay. What can you do better next time? I write a book, you know, people, lots of people write books. They don't sell like the school of greatness. Right. Okay. So they, give up. And they say, Oh, it was, it was just, it was stupid of me to even think that I could be an author. Stop giving up so early, you know, try for five years, 10 years. If you have to work a normal job and then support your dreams at night or on the weekends, that's fine. You know, with modern medicine, we're going to live over a hundred years. 
you know, singularity is coming if we yes. eat right. Yes. <laughs> I had my smoked salmon and berries this morning <laughs> and my green tea like right it. here. I like it. Yes. You got to stay committed to it now. Now I'm going to build the momentum. <laughs> so, you, so you can call me <laughs> out on Jonah this. Hill. I told you to call me out on this. Yes. Tell, tell everybody. Your so story. Every like six months I hang out with Tim and he's either like the best shape I've ever seen anyone or he's like uh, Oompa Loompa, like walking around eating like anything he wants to. And he's like, Oompa oh, Loompa is fat. I, I yeah, think they're right? just tiny. Yeah, tiny I don't think and they're round. Fat. Oh, maybe Are they're they not. Round? Maybe I'm thinking of the, the girl who turns into like the big. Veruca. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, Tim's like, he's very extreme, I think, or you have been in the past. So maybe you'll be your own teacher. You'll learn from your history that, and you'll apply the lessons and move forward in a consistent manner. And that's why I wanted you to call me out on yes. this because I have gone back and forth. I'm like a stock, you know, there's a bull market and a bear market for my weight right now. I'm, I'm pretty trending good. up. I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, I'm trending down, but you want to trend down and wait. Gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah. It's opposite the yeah, stock yeah, market, yeah. but you do need Your to health stay is committed. trending up. My health is trending up. I, you know, I, in the past I've, I've had huge issues with work life balance, yes. um, travel balance, you know, trying to work from Asia while traveling. I, it's not an exact science, but what I found with anybody successful, like most people don't realize what it takes to truly be successful. They're like, Oh, I want to be rich. I want to be successful. And they think that, you know, you don't have to put in like extraordinary amounts of time yeah. to actually make it like so few people make it not because they're so talented or genetically gifted. Obviously you have a few of those people, but a lot right. of it is just such hard work and perseverance. I mean, thousands of hours of study. I get messages from people that are like, how can I be a millionaire in the stock market with as little time and as little money down right now? And I'm like, roll the dice and you're, get lucky. Well, right? but you're asking the wrong questions. Yeah, yeah. Like you should be asking like, you know, how much time is required for me to study? And it's different for everybody. You know, people yeah. pick up different concepts. And people don't want to put in that time. It's too much energy or work. I just did a webinar uh, talking about a program that I'm doing, a 10-week class that I do to help people really optimize their life, their goals, yeah. their dreams, their financial habits, everything. A couple of questions were like, well, how much time a week is this going to take to go through this training? I go, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. If you give me 10 minutes, you're going to get that much of results. Yeah. If you give me more hours and you take action, you're going to get better results. Well, you know, 80% of people who have a gym membership don't even go to the gym. Yeah. Okay. And you know, so you have a gym membership. That doesn't mean you're going to be healthy. You actually have to use the machines. You actually have to sweat it out. And so I actually find this. I have 6,000 students now, over 80 countries. That's fantastic. Mm. But my average video lesson only gets about 500 views. Okay. Unless I really push people, unless I post like a thumbnail with my Lamborghini, this, these pictures of my cars and yes. I take pictures of cash, it actually gets people studying harder, which wow. is their only shot. But it's crazy how few people actually put in the time. And you need to have a big goal. This is why I always talk about my millionaire students. Some people say, oh, it's bad to talk about that. So few of them are actually millionaires. But if you have a big goal, studies have been proven that they increase your daily performance 15 to 25%. So if you're looking, you know, if you're at the gym and you see like posters of people, they don't show posters of like fat people. Right. They're posters of people with perfect average bodies. average shape. Yeah, Nothing. Yeah. They're perfect like most of them are genetically freaks, you know, yes. gifted freaks that are on the walls here and they're professional models. And you're looking at that and you're on the treadmill and you're looking and you're like trying to like be that person. So for me as a stock market teacher, I post pictures literally of like a million dollars in cash. Business Insider followed me bed. around. I, I took out 1.2 million. I don't post counterfeit cash. I just went to the bank one day, took it out, <laughs> took, took photos and videos. I don't carry cash around with me. FYI. So don't, <laughs> don't stock you. Don't you're bother. Mayweather. Yeah. yeah. I, I just took it out of the bank and I post it because if you're looking at that, it increases my video views. I, mm. I did the exact same video with a 45 minute technical take on this stock. And I was like, here are the pros, here are the cons. And it got so few likes. And I had the thumbnail as like the stock chart because that's what, the, what I'm analyzing. Then I did the exact same video and I reposted it with a thumbnail of my Lamborghini. And it got four times the amounts of views and they watched it three times longer because now you see the reward for actually watching it. Oh, if I learn this stuff, I might be able to get a Lamborghini too. Mm. So it's whatever motivates yes. you. And it doesn't matter if it's charity or Lamborghinis or cash or success or you know buying something for your family. You need to find what motivates yourself to work harder than you ever thought possible to find success. Mm. It's not laziness. Like not even like average 
effort is going to get you to true success. And most people, they come up to me, they say, oh, I want to be rich. That's it's nice. It's, you know, it's like, like, this, like this fun concept. Like, oh, I want to be a millionaire. But they don't really <laughs> believe it. They think it's like only going to happen to somebody. Yeah. It can happen to anybody. None of my millionaire students that are I, we're not that smart, okay? I'm not that smart. I, I can admit my own defects. I'm not that good at math. But you've researched, you've studied, you've trained. I have a work years. ethic like no other, okay? Gary Vaynerchuk has a work ethic. I have a work ethic. Gary and I, if we stacked up work ethics, I would win. That's how insane it is, okay? I swear to God, I am. You ask anybody in my family, they're scared of me of how hard I work. <laughs> You're committed, I know. It's insane. But when you have that drive, like, I can't even stop if I wanted to. I have like this blood flowing. Like when someone says, you know, some people say you can't short sell penny stocks. Like you can't bet against them. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a common lie out there because in order to short sell penny stocks, you need to find a broker that has shares to short. If you're with a crappy broker and they just don't want to admit that they're a crappy broker, they're just going to say, oh, you can't do that. It's illegal. So I get an email pretty much every day from somebody who says, what you're doing is illegal. This is a scam. And my blood boils. And I just start writing and I show them video lesson after video lesson. Like, how am I doing this trade? I do live trading videos too. So I show the trade and I'm like, this is not illegal. You just have a shitty broker. Oh, crappy broker. <laughs> it's okay. Am I, supposed, am I allowed okay. to say I know this is a family program. <laughs> I'm sorry. Lo siento. Now, something I want to uh, address is you. I love how you really don't care what people think about you. And now this is like maybe on some level, but pretty much 99% of the time you don't care. You want to make sure that people know that you're doing everything you know legally and uh, according to like law and everything else i guess but the way you post things online is very uh, aggressive aggressive and um you know it's it rubs like a you lot said, of people the it rubs way. like almost a lot of people like the nine out of ten way. people yes. are like but i don't care about outsiders what i care about are my students so again it comes back to what makes you happy what can you do to make yourself happy for me Giving back, right. I love that, but also creating millionaires from scratch. So I don't care what nine out of 10 outsiders think. I care about right. what one out of 10 and those one out of 10 people are my students. And what can I do to get my students studying harder? So yes. it's, it's weird. Yeah, you're going to pull up my Instagram, so right? Just, so just so I can see, I mean, I look at the top <laughs> posts, I see... Uh, you do a lot of these, which I like. It's just kind of like your that's laptop. That's the Viceroy Bali. Yeah, yeah like the laptop on a, like, on a lunch or a breakfast table with like a nice those view. Those are the best pancakes in the world. I don't want to tempt you. I know you're on a diet. But a, lot of, a lot of nice views. Here's like Bali or something in the Maldives. Maldives. Then yeah. you've got the, the Ferrari. Ferraris. Yeah. you got the – the. here's a stack of, I don't know, a couple million dollars. 1.2 million. 1.2 million dollars yeah. just in stacks. And that was a picture at the bank. Apparently, you're not supposed to take pictures. I got in yelled at a second Ooh, later. Wow. Because there's these laws, and it's taboo to talk yes. about this stuff, and you, it shouldn't be. Like it's it's no different than like talking about your body. Like people are scared of like nipples. Why are people scared to talk about money? Because <sighs> again, you know, you have like the Wolf of Wall Street. You have so many internet scammers, and they've like abused people for so long. Like there's so many people who are abused. Like how can I be sure that you're not a scam? And I'm like, if you have any doubts, don't learn. I have over 800 free videos now on my YouTube channel. So if you don't see that and you still don't want to learn, I'm not begging you. The cool thing about being real in basically an industry full of scams is I get to choose my students. So if it, people have doubts, it's fine. Just don't talk to me, you know, but I do my best to give people as much as I can of education and these kinds of photos inspire people and sometimes it pisses people off. But as long as you can, I think. And how does it, how does it make you feel when people are like. Say all these negative comments under a post. Well, so my first millionaire student actually was my first hater. He wrote a blog really? post called the Timothy, S Timothy Zykes is full of BS. You can Google it. Wow. It's still there. He's, he's updated. He said, I went from Tim's ha biggest hater to Tim's biggest fan. He's now made 1.6 million. His name is Michael Good. He's the moderator of my chat room. And he made all these comments when I first came out saying, I'm going to create a millionaire. And he was like, just another internet sales guy. But he tried all my stuff. He watched my DVDs. He implemented a lot of it in his trading, and now he does very well. So if I can turn my biggest hater into a millionaire, I can do that with anybody. So as long as I make some kind of you know memory, some imprint on people, there's still a chance. And a lot of people don't necessarily like me at first, or they you know don't want to study at first. And I'm saying, okay, that's fine because I don't, I don't need non-dedicated students. Mm -hmm. Again, if you want to truly be successful, you have to be so dedicated. If you have the wrong mindset from the beginning, it's impossible. You're just wasting your time. You're wasting my time. So right. I'd rather just cut it off. 
Um, but a lot of these people who don't study at first, then eventually they get interested and then maybe they see a stock that I called right, or they see one of my free videos and they come back six months, nine months later and they become my students. So it's not about getting, and this goes for your, you know, you as an internet business yes. and you as a podcaster, it's not about getting the customer right away. It's just showing who you are. And if you can get them to hate you at first, that's fine. As long as they're willing to look at you later on or they'll hear about you later on. I'm just going to keep doing my yeah. thing. The stock market doesn't change. There's always going to be more right. plays. Right. The f there's a good quote. You know Grant Cardone is, right? I do. There's a great co quote that he wrote. I think it says, like, uh, one day they love me. The next day they hate me. Both days I get paid, which I really find is, like, just funny to me because it doesn't matter who likes you or doesn't like you. If you stay committed to your vision and yeah. you offer value and you're giving good service – you're well, going to build your business. Well, some of my top students hate me, and I'm I'm fine with that. Cause <laughs> Why I, do they hate you? Because, I, again, I'm aggressive. I'm pushy. I'm like, you must follow the rules. You must work so hard. And they're like, all right, I get it. I'm like this annoying parent who's like telling the kids to eat broccoli and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I'm not here to make friends. I already have enough friends, and yeah. I don't even have time for them. I, I actually <laughs> need to do better with that in 2017. I apologize to a lot of my friends. But I'm here – kind of like a drill sergeant like i'm the toughest coach that my people will ever have because i'm interested in their success so if i'm all like nice and i'm like oh it's okay and i'm like coddling them that doesn't make them into a millionaire that doesn't make them into a good trader it might make me more popular it might get me more business but it doesn't help me with my goals and frankly i think it goes counter to my goals because now i'm creating a whole generation of students who you know just think like the stock market mm. is all nice and warm and fuzzy yeah it's not the stock market is a battlefield and I need to arm my soldiers with the right tools. You can't come on a battlefield with a knife and everyone else has machine guns. You're going to get killed. Okay. Yeah. So if I present the stock market in the wrong way and this, you know, stock trading in the wrong way, I mean, 90% of traders lose money. 70% of investors fail to beat the S and P 500 every year. If you look at the stats, they're terrible. Each trade has a little dancing baby that makes it so easy. You know, if that dancing baby actually stock traded, he would get slaughtered. Okay. It would be a bloody baby. It would be a mess. And that would not make TV commercials if, if they wanted to be real about what the wow. market is. So you have these marketing <laughs> companies that basically paint everything so rosy. I mean, Jim Cramer, I'll mention the ugly ball guy on CNBC, his ratings are at all-time lows because he's wrong 70% of the time. Barron's has done an expose on him. There's a lot of exposés looking at his winning percentage. So wow. you can have the hype, but that's not going to get you rich. So I have to cut through that. That's the sad reality. That's why I don't mind pissing people off. All I care about are stats and the success of my students. And as mm. long as I stick to that vision in the future, I'll have more millionaire students. When I first said I'm going to create a millionaire, no one believed me. And then I had one and two within a few weeks, and now I have a few. And I can't mention a few of them. Some of my millionaire students hate me because I'm, I'm like sharing their story. Some of them want privacy. I have to do better with that. You know, if you make a lot of money, you deserve the privacy, even though I don't agree with it. <laughs> right, right. Because um, I'm full transparency. I want to get it all out there. I'm glad right. that some of my millionaire students get it and some of my upcoming six-figure students get it. But right, right. I understand when you talk about money, you know, it, it's weird. Um, but I just have to try and share all these stories. And I share yes. stories of, of like students who lose too. But mm -hmm. it's very tough to lose everything. You know, a lot of people are scared of the stock market. You're like, oh, I could lose everything. How do you lose everything if you focused on rule number one about cutting losses quickly every time? I have a whole DVD where I do like a Mickey Mouse voice. And I'm like, <laughs> Mickey Mouse or castrated choir boy. That's what I say. Okay. I'm like, I trade like a castrated choir boy. <laughs> and if you think like that, you know. I have some weird analogies. Sure, sure. Okay. But if you think like that, it's very tough to lose everything. Mm -hmm. It's not like Vegas right, where right. you're you're rolling the you dice, know, it's gone. All on red or black, double or nothing. You can lose two percent on a trade and you know, if you put in ten thousand dollars, you know, you lose two hundred bucks, it's not the end of the world. Right. If you put in five thousand dollars, but too many people with a few thousand dollars to their name think that they have to invest in good companies and diversify. If you make ten percent, twenty percent per year on a five thousand dollar account. You're making what? 500 over the year? 1,000 over the year? I mean, that's like one fun night out. Right. Okay? Right. If you want to live. Right. So you have to think in terms of like, what is, what is going to change your life? Six figures, seven figures. Going back to what can make you happy? What can get you the freedom so that you can explore what you want? Mm. And it's tough to think about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Again, there's mostly scam artists who have never made millions of dollars themselves. I sure. actually made millions before I got started teaching. Right. You have a lot of teachers who've never done anything with their lives. 
So if you've never done anything with your life, how are you qualified to teach? There's a lot of people in the stock market that are newbies. They've been trading stocks or investing for like a year, two years, three years. They've only seen this bull market. What happens when a bear market comes? They're not prepared. Their students aren't prepared. So it comes down to education, experience, yeah. and dedication. What, um, I'm pumped <clears throat> up, man. <laughs> in terms of – now, you, you've been trading stocks, penny stocks for a long time. How yeah. many years? 18 years. <clears throat> 18 years. And you're also now – 18 years? 18, that's a long time, man. I know. It could be your child right now. I know. 18 years you've been, te- you've, been tr- you've been trading, and then you started teaching and educating because you saw the opportunity. People saw your results and said, hey, show me what you're doing. So yeah. you started teaching and saw a big opportunity there. Now, in that business – uh, you're promoting all over the place. I see you, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere, yeah. blogs, everything. Yeah. What is bringing the best uh, leads right now? What's bringing the most qualified customers for your business? Yeah. And for entrepreneurs listening, where should they be spending their so time? So this is going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people have said, you know, the death of Twitter. Twitter is the best right now because wow. Snapchat is growing, Instagram is growing. But I think what you find if you're teaching and, and you know, you're selling some educational product like people who need education not some little gifts or some little uh you know i don't even know what they sell there's so much junk out there on the internet it's like the wild west if you're selling something useful to actually people who want to better their lives intelligently okay like you want to expand your mind twitter as slow as it is whatever it really works Mm. so well with the educated crowd okay i'm not talking about like buying a little sticker or like right. some little t-shirt or something or else. some little filter you know i understand there's a big business with that with like 13 year olds and stuff like that that's that's not my audience and i don't oh. think that's most people's audience yes. so twitter for us is booming um i mean you can follow me timothy sykes on twitter and i'm posting i, I think it's also because I've, I've encouraged my people to share their trades openly <clears throat> and screenshots so we can see what other students are doing. So it's not just learning from me, but other students. And that way we have this whole community now. People sharing and showing what they're doing. But yeah. every single day I'm posting like 30, 40, 50 students who are making $500, $1,000 a day. And it's nothing huge in, in terms of Wall Street. You know, Wall Street looks down on like $500 a day. But the average person, you ask them, would you like to make an extra $500 or $1,000? Would you like that knowledge? Huge, especially over time because it day. adds up. A day. And it adds up over time. Sometimes you lose. Sometimes you lose 100 or 200, but sometimes you make. You know, in the past two days, I'm up 12,000 now. Yesterday, when I saw you, you know, we went to the comedy show. I was I had made 10,000 yesterday. Today, I made about 2,600. Wow. So I'm trading with different amounts. I trade with a small amount just in order to teach. Mm-hmm. But How much do you trade with normally? Um, so this year, I started with $5,000 uh, to begin the year. Last year, I started with 12000 I grew it to like 100000 So what I teach is, you know, you can basically make six figures per year. I've never had a seven-year, uh, seven-figure profit in one year in trading stocks. My best year, I made about $850,000. Um, but I'm still a millionaire because, you know, you make eight fifty, you make three fifty, you make 500 and it adds up. And that's the freedom. So again, yeah. there's people on Wall Street. I mean, they're making the best traders out there make 50, 100, 200 million, 2 billion. But their strategies require a huge amount of capital. A lot of money, yeah. You have to be in New York. You have to have the connections. You have to be a genius. Right, right. And it's not applicable. My strategy is applicable to average people. So when you said like, oh, you got into the business of teaching, you saw an opportunity. My strategy is better for small accounts. I didn't right. choose this. I didn't, never wanted to be a penny stock trader. But it's ideal for people with like 5,000, 10,000, yeah, 20,000. Yeah. Got it. And I'm never a billion. I have no billionaire students. I never will have a billionaire <laughs> student. And that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm curious about – I want to I wrap things up here in a moment. Yeah. But I want to go back to the uh, the thing that you kind of you kind of went over quickly about your announcement with Pencil Promise. Yeah. Now, you made a million-dollar donation – to Pencil Promise, which is an organization that I'm a supporter of. I'm on the advisory board. I've built schools with. And I brought you in, I think, a year and a half ago or something. Yeah, or yeah. A couple of years ago. Yeah. And I said, you got to put, if you're putting money in charities, you got to put it into this yeah. something. Yeah. Now, why Pencil Promise? Why a million dollar donation? So let me explain again. As I mentioned briefly, you know, the charity world has a lot of different charities, no different than the stock market. Some are good, some are bad. Um, you have to do your research. And I've done little tests, you know, just like I do in the stock market. I, I do a test trade. I do a little trade. With the charity world, I've done little donations. I've donated, yeah. you know, Cambodian Village Fund. My school's opening up. I just donated 50000 to build on. We're building a school in Nepal. Wow. I don't know if you've been there. That place is amazing. 
I went hiking in Nepal. Wow. And it's it's beautiful. So I'm going back there when the school opens probably in like six months. Um, I build schools in Bali now with the uh, Bali Children's Project. Mm -hmm. I have a few schools there. Just surprise them with a $75,000 donation. So 50000 75000 you know, 25000 here or there. Make-A-Wish, Boys and Girls Club, 25000 You've donated everywhere. 50000 a lot of what I'm into, you know, we, we've yeah. donated to some medical charities for, for breast cancer victims. Um, but I, I really focus on education. You know, this is my yes. life. So I gravitated towards it. So yeah, you introduced me to pencils of promise. You know, my first uh, donation was 120,000 and it's that opened, donation. it's cool. And it opened up some good schools. Um, but then, you know, when we went to Laos and I actually still have to post this video, like I surprised them in Laos with this donation. I made a live announcement. Wow. They didn't even understand. They were trying to translate. The translator uh, <laughs> was like a thousand dollars. I was like, no, a, a million. They were like, <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't understand. It was, it's actually a funny video. I got to post it. Did they um, would get it when they were like, oh, a million. I think, I mean, I don't speak their language, but yeah. at, when, when she said a thousand at first and you know, we're like, oh yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. So there was like a little clap, like thousand dollars. Okay. I mean, they're grateful for anything, of course. but then a million, I don't think they can even comprehend. I mean, this is 20 How? plus schools, 20 schools, 20 schools. And you know, pencils of promise also has these other programs. It's not just about building schools, yeah, the educational programs. And Correct. Stuff, yeah, yeah. So e-readers teaching teachers to be better teachers, you know, to make them more efficient yeah. operating the schools. Pencils of Promise has now built nearly 400 schools worldwide, but all the schools are still operating. And I actually asked them, and this is one of the reasons why I went so big. All these other charities that I donate to, they're grateful and, and they're great charities. Okay, I haven't, I have not, I have yet to donate to like a bad charity. Um, they're all doing good and they're all amazing. But Pencils of Promise has something that the others don't, which is scalability. Because again, they're so organized. Everything is based on numbers. You know, they use Salesforce. I mean, it's it's very organized. And so when they build 400 schools, that's a test for building, you know, 4,000 schools. Mm -hmm. And if the numbers in the programs line up, they can build 40,000 schools. These other charities, it's good to build these schools. It's cool. But frankly, they're just not equipped to be that scalable. And it's, it reminds me very similarly of my teaching where I teach people to make $500, $1,000. And then eventually it adds up to six or seven figures. It's scalable up to a limit. With Pencils of Promise, there's no limit. And they've built this amazing infrastructure that I think a lot of people don't realize it takes a while to build the infrastructure before you can scale anything. So the hardest yeah. part is building the infrastructure, the foundation. And then once you scale and scale and scale, but this is the single largest donation in Pencils of Promise history. So I'm pumped about that. Congrats. Um, but it, it hopefully will usher in this new era where other people start to realize, wait a minute, this is a scalable thing. Like they wouldn't even let me have internet at my schools. I was like, give me internet at my schools. And they're like, <laughs> well, let's just make sure I, you know, Susie, I was talking with Susie yes. and, and Michael <laughs> and I was like, I, you know, I, I'm an internet guy. Give me internet in the schools. And they're like, well, we're, we're testing that in a, a small group, um, you know, in, in Guatemala and we'll see how the test goes. And I was like, I was kind of taken aback at first. I was kind of pissed. Cause I was like, I, I'm the donor. I should get right, this. Right. <laughs> but then once I started realizing, wait a minute, they, they do everything based on big data. So they're learning from the existing 300, what is it? 388 schools, I think right yeah. now is the count. And then they take that and they optimize. And that is the secret of success. With technology, with the internet, we've just gotten started looking at big data and how we can optimize that. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be fascinating. I mean, we're still like picture like the U S and the wild West and like the 1880s, 1850s, like the gold rush kind of thing. That's what I think the internet is right now where that's why I think people are so happy with their little, you know, emoticons. That's what I was looking for. And they, they think, Oh, this is amazing. This is the internet. That's not the internet. Okay. That's like selling fool's gold in 1870 in Alaska. <laughs> The, the future of the internet is based on big data, using that data to optimize businesses, mm. education, charities, everything that actually truly matters. And if we can use it right and stay focused instead of the negativity, the political negativity, the, you know, using social media just when you're bored at your job, you know, it's an easy thing. Like you right. pull it up, people are bored in the lines. I'm not saying that it's bad to be entertained, but you have to look at the, the full promise mm. and pencils of promise actually gets it. And I think more people will get it as we start to see more applications used with big data. Mm. So what's your call to action for people with giving or pencil promise or charities in general? Um, I mean, obviously <clears throat> they need money, you know, charities need money. Okay. It's all well to do. I get people messaging me like, yeah, I love this. This is awesome. How can I help give money? Give money they, yeah. they need funding. You know, they've, they've, 
optimized their infrastructure. They're ready for more, but they need funding. Um, so if you have the money to you Wall Street douchebags out there, I know you have the money. I know you're spending it on stupid, stupid things like provocateur and one oak. And, you know, no offense to those great establishments, but there's so much more in life than, you know, I, I've done that. I've bought, right. I've bought bottles. I've wasted so much money on, on such stupid things in my life. So if you have that money, so much extra money could be used to really build these kinds of things. Yeah. If you don't have money, that's cool. What you can do is actually study and find your passion and make a lot of money. Money yeah. does make the world go round. It's nice to volunteer, but if you truly want to make an impact, you got to really think big yeah. and you need to think big about your own life. It's not just charities too. money. Unfortunately, I don't make the rules. I'm sorry to be like the, the bad guy. I'm just the messenger here. Right. But you need money for the freedom. Otherwise you have to pay your bills. Like I've never seen, I, I know a, a few stock traders that don't trade with big accounts, but they're like, Oh, I've made 188% on my small account. I was like, can you pay your rent with that percent? I, I didn't know what, what's the rent on a building with that, that accepts percentages. <laughs> they, I'm sorry. That's not how it right, works. Right. You know, hypothetical <laughs> performance, like, well, I'm, I'm paper trading and I'm just testing. <clears throat> okay. Paper trading is good. Testing is good, but you need to eventually make money. That's yeah. what matters in this world. So yeah. it all comes back to it, no matter how you slice it. And that's why I'm in the business of teaching people to make money. And mm. that's my life's work. I love it, man. Um, final few questions. Actually, I want people to uh, declare what, how much they want to give this year on Twitter with us. Okay. So you're going to tag at Timothy Sykes, at Lewis Howes, yeah. and say how much you want to give, whether it's to Pencil Promise or some local charity or whatever charity you want to give to. But leave us a comment on I Twitter. I want to say tag two numbers, okay. what you can give in 2017. Yes. And then also, if you study, if you build – your knowledge, your knowledge account, your skill set, and you really focus on growing, even if you're in school, even if you have a job, what can you give 10 years from now? What do you think mm. you can give? So you need to think about your future self. This is what I tell all my students. Like sometimes you're trading with a small account and it's like, oh, I made $20. I lost $20. This is so stupid. Right. But you're preparing for your future self. So if you keep studying and keep practicing stock trading or whatever your passion is, think about what you can do with this if you keep going for the next 10 years. So I want two comments from you guys. What can you give in 2017? And if you really fulfill yourself and your destiny and whatever you're put on this earth for to find your passion and ideally, you know, really take it to the next level, make some money with it. What can you do in 10 years mm. and start thinking about that goal? If charity really inspires you say, I want to be able to give a million dollars in 10 years, work backwards. What can you do yeah. over the next 10 years to get to that point where you can give away a million dollars? I know some people say, I just want to have a million dollars in 10 years to give away a million dollars. You need to have more <laughs> than that. <laughs> exactly. So it'll be interesting to see the comments. Yeah. Yeah. So two numbers at Lewis house at Timothy Sykes, <laughs> Uh, the number this year and the number in 10 years. I like that. Your goal. And that goal way, give. Yeah. every single day for from this year for the next 10 years, how many days is that? 365 times, times 10. 10. <laughs> 3,600 days, right? There Roughly. Go. There you go. You get five days off per year it's just because I don't want to <laughs> do math. But 3,600 days, what can you do over the next 3,600 days mm. to get to that goal? Mm, like and if it. you think like that, no matter what your passion is, no matter what your industry is, you start pushing yourself in the right direction. I know some people like say like write notes, like before you go to bed, like repeat it in the mirror. I've heard all kinds of different stuff, but just get mm. in the mindset of thinking, what can you do in 10 yeah. years? And you'll be amazed. Forget about just one year or two years. You can accomplish a lot, but 10 years, I mean, you can turn your whole life around. I don't care if you're dead broke right now. Yeah. If you follow your dreams in 10 years, it'll be amazing. It's funny because literally 10 years ago this year, I was talking about this on a webinar this morning. I, my dream of being a professional athlete ended by getting injured. And I was telling the story about how I was broke for a year and a half, had credit card debt, had student loans, had no money coming in for a year and a half, 10 years ago. Yeah. And I was just reflecting, I'm like, wow, even though 10 years is a long time, it also felt like a few years ago. And look what I created in 10 years from having no information, no skills, no tools, no resources, no relationships. But 10 years out, I created a lot more than what I had. And we can all create more if we continue to be focused and committed over 
a decade. A decade is a long time to you create something. You can do so much in 10 yeah. years, but yeah. most people don't think like that. They think, what can I do in the next six months? What can I do yeah. a year max? I can't even picture two years. Yeah. If you have like a 10-year goal, I mean, life is long. Okay, like you can do so much. Forget about 10 years. What can you do in 20 years? I'm not going to stretch everyone's imagination there. But what can you do in 10 years that will be so scalable now? And then it just builds and it builds and it builds. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. I'm actually writing my book right now for Blog Millionaire. Nice. Literally, I was just writing a chapter the other night. It's been 10 years to the month since my reality show, Wall Street Warriors, debuted. Which is what got me into teaching because I was running a hedge fund. I was managing money for these rich snobs. And I, it sucked. You know, I, I can't do cocaine. So I wasn't invited <laughs> to any of the parties um, in New York. And it sucked. And I'm managing money for these. Just, I, don't, I don't like rich people in case you, you couldn't tell. Okay. <laughs> I don't get along. I get along with like average people much better. I make too many weird jokes or whatever. But <laughs> I was managing money. And then this TV show that everyone told me not to do started airing on Mojo, which was like one of the first high def TV networks there went out of business. But because this was a little TV show and a little network and it was HD, so all these nerds had like early HD TVs in like 2006, 2007, 2008, it became the top, uh, the top selling TV show on the early iTunes of 2008 from what I heard. Mm. And this stupid little TV show that I did and I was drunk in every episode, I was an idiot because I was so depressed with my life started becoming a hit and I would get 10, 20, 50, 100 emails. How can I learn stock market? How can I learn to trade stocks? That's what got me into teaching because I recognized that there was a demand for this. Yep. And it's been 10 years. So I've created my entire teaching business in 10 years and my life has changed. I'm very happy. You know, I've, I've had amazing success in teaching. I've had amazing family success and relationship mm-hmm. success and travel success. Yeah, you take your family with you all the trips to see them. But 10 years... If you have that goal, your life will change. But many wow. people can't think that, yeah. that long. So I want, I want to change that. I like it, man. Uh, final few questions for you. Sure. I don't know if we asked this the last time. You were on two and a half years ago, I saw, actually. Was it really two and a half, two half years, years ago? Two and a half years ago in April? Is that what it was? Yeah. May? Time May. Flies. Two and a half years, man. Wow. Um, this is called the three truths. Okay. I don't think you answered this last time. Three truths. If uh, today was the last day, many, many years from now for you, because you're going to live over 100, so 70 plus. Over 200. 200, yeah. Singularity, yeah. Uh, If this was the last day and you've achieved everything you want, all your wildest dreams have happened, you've given away more money than you can think of, um, but for whatever reason, all the videos you put out there on the internet, your books, programs, erased from time. Yeah. All your information is gone yeah. of what you said. Yeah. And you had a piece of paper and a pen to write down three things you know to be true Ooh. from your entire life. Ooh. That would be all people know to remember you by. Yeah. What would be those three truths or lessons? This is deep. There was no backup on the internet. Skynet wiped no it all out. It's all gone. Hypothetical. And Skynet. Um, <laughs> Skynet is coming, okay? I'm, I'm very worried about that. I'm, I'm helping build it with Stocks to Trade. This is my automated software that builds everything. But... I'm scared of that. That's, that's with your hypothetical, but yes. I think that's potentially in the future. Um, three things. Yes. Be honest with yourself um, about what you love and who you are. And you know, if you don't know, then do what you can to really find out what makes you happy. Because I think too many people are living for others. And they're, they're living based on expectations of others and the rules of others. And they're just ignoring themselves. And part of the reason why I sleep like a baby and I'm so happy and, and fulfilled in life is because I stopped caring about other people and focused on what made me happy. And frankly, what makes me happy is pretty good. Um, that's number one. Number two, wait, everything is wiped out. The internet is gone. Your information. I'm just worried that you about put this. Out there. No, the internet's still here. The internet's here. Yes. Okay. But for whatever reason, your stuff's been erased. God, Skynet. <laughs> um, I would say that, you know, obviously, you know, be kind. Love is the answer. I mean, I could come up with all these like cliche stuff, but be so brutally, brutally honest with, with everybody and it'll change all your relationships. Even if some of the, the truths that you, you talk about are tough. Like it, it's not necessarily like being kind to everybody. Sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind. And that's not something to be taken lightly. I'm not just saying be cruel to be cruel, but you have to try to picture everything. I mean, I, I kind of picture everything like a stock trade is part of the 
consequences of my job, but it's like risk reward, like upside downside. Mm -hmm. I, I try to encapsulate everything. Um, and, and in that truth, in that reality, life is not always, you know, rainbows and, and leprechauns and Oompa Loompas. <laughs> um, life can be harsh. And the sooner you realize that and the more upfront you can be about that, you won't have to live in the BS anymore. Cause mm. a lot of people live in the BS and there's so many fake people, especially in LA, New York and Miami, this triangle of fakeness, just <laughs> This, this triangle of death sure. between these three cities that we all seem to go bounce between. Um, and the third one, there's no such thing as perfection at all. And you have to realize that. And, you know, you try your best to be as good as you can, whether you're a stock trader or you're a podcaster or, you know, in your relationships or with your parents or with your friendships uh, or with your career. Perfection is impossible. So stop trying to be perfect. Stop coming down on yourself so hard when you're imperfect, when you make a mistake. I see so many people get down on themselves like it's the end of the world. You made a mistake. You're human. Mm. Or maybe in this future, you're <clears throat> not human. Maybe you're part cyborg. But until we're full <clears throat> cyborg, okay, right. while we're mostly human, even if we have certain cybernetic parts, we will make mistakes. And it's okay. It's not the end of the world, no matter mm. what it is. And you have to learn from that. And, and I think that's the future of our world. We're going to make mistakes. And some of them are going to be bigger and have more consequences than others. But if you accept it and you learn from it, no different than what I say, like if you have a loss in the stock market, right. everything I do relates back to the stock market. I, I see it too much. Um, you'll be in a better position to accept reality and then get better in the future. For me, it's all about accepting the truths of the universe and life and money and education and fulfillment. It's all related. I was a philosophy major. Okay. I wasn't even a business major. All my right. friends were doing business. I was doing philosophy. So I think a lot about this stuff and it's all interconnected. So be real, be honest, be open-minded and don't be so hard on yourselves because we're all amazing. Like I don't care who out there is watching this. If, if they're in America, if they're in Europe, if they're in Asia, if they're a man or a woman, mm -hmm. I know you have a book about masculinity. Mm -hmm. I, I would write a book about humanity. I, I don't know about masculinity. I mean, look at these little arms, right? <laughs> right. Uh, I don't have that much hair on my chest. I never did. I don't know why. But if you can learn to be the best human and you can optimize your existence mm -hmm. and optimize your time um, and just do the best that you can do, but always be improving. Like that 10-year <laughs> example that we came up with, yeah. it's so good. It's going to change so many people's lives just thinking about, Whoa, 3,600 days, like, you know, marking down one day at a time. What can I do to get closer to the goal? Mm -hmm. And people don't think like that. So think outside the box. I, I think that might have been more than three things. But this is what I'm thinking, you know. It's like just, it. it's a whole ball of wax, and we're all imperfect, but we can do better with effort and the right perspective. I like it, man. I like it. Um, I have a, a final question, but I want to make sure that people go check out timothysykes.com. Check out stocks to trade.com right yeah, the new yeah. software that you have that so this kind of is the software that we're building that's going to erase everything and kill off humanity exactly, eventually this exactly. is the baby software yeah no it's i work so hard and i re recognize that i'm not always going to be able to work every day mm -hmm. the stock market is open every day so my team and i have been working for two years to build this software that basically automates my strategy and gives all these signals on the best stocks to trade. And eventually it'll be like, don't make that trade. You're an idiot. Like we'll have like audio. It's so alert. simple to make I'm trades. Serious. If you want to do it on your own, I like that. Yeah. So but it just to automates it. All made, automated. Correct. Stocks to trade .com. So if I get erased completely somehow. Go there. Like Looper and you know, my future self kills my younger self. I just ruined that movie for everybody. I'm sorry. Did it's you okay. see that movie? I didn't see it. Well, now you know the ending. Okay. But he was he was not a good guy, and he killed his, his younger self, so he never existed, so there's no bad stuff. It was actually a, kind of Crazy. a beautiful time travel movie. So if my future self somehow kills my current self, maybe I do turn into a bad guy. Maybe all this money and power corrupts me. Somehow, stocks to trade hopefully will still exist, although it depends when I kill my younger self. <laughs> if I kill my younger self in the future, stocks to trade will exist. If right. we travel back to like 1981, like Terminator, I'm done. Stocks to trade will never exist. But right now it exists. And it automates um, stock trading signals. And mm -hmm. it's not just my strategy. It's also we've modeled 20 other millionaire traders. We're trying to model everything and automate it. It's kind of like a Bloomberg for average people. Mm, I like it. Sorry, what was your question? I interrupted you. No, I like it. Um, 
Where else should we connect with you online? I'm just Timothy Sykes everywhere on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube. And your favorite um, channel, Twitter? I mean, Twitter is good because... I don't. Do you know there's cash tags? Have you heard of that? So there's yeah. there's hashtags which are really popular. But in the stock market, if you use the stock mm. ticker and you put a dollar sign in oh, front wow. of it, it organizes so you can see every discussion on Twitter about that one ticker. Wow. Amazing. So cash tags are huge for Twitter. But I would refer everybody to my YouTube channel because again, I have 800 plus videos, live trades, webinars. I just posted how my top student made nine hundred twenty thousand dollars yes uh, last year, not yesterday, but nine hundred twenty thousand, and he gave a two hour webinar yesterday. Wow! Live trading webinar. He made uh, eight grand yesterday, so that's all free, and you can just start to see, you know, what I'm actually talking about. I'm not just hype. Mm -hmm. I'm not just these million dollar stacks. There's actually knowledge behind these stacks. Mm, I like it. And I encourage everybody. All these internet people watching this, you have a lot of internet people. If you want true success, true success, not just money, but true success, like having happy customers, mm -hmm. being fulfilled, you will work your ass off and you will consider this all rather than just being a shady, shady affiliate or MLM person where it's like, look at this energy drink or, you know, take this vitamin. I see so much BS and we need to stop burning customers because it hurts everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the internet thinks it's only about them. We're like polluting the internet with all this crap. Right. And you need to cut through that. And if you provide quality, we can turn back the tide. Just like, you know, environmental stuff. I'm not going to get in there. But sure, sure. people think that it's okay if they pollute the internet with their crap. It's not. And we're going to need to like start like recycling on the internet. We're going to need to start changing it. Otherwise... Mm -hmm. People aren't going to trust the internet. But again, this is the Wild West. They can't help it. I get it. People are, you know, desperate and, and selfish right now. But right. the future of the internet is going to be all about quality, commitment, dedication, and patience. Mm -hmm. And your podcast, let's just, before we finish this, what's your podcast going to be in 10 years? We've talked about like money giving in 10 years. I'm going to donate $50 million in 10 years. I'll just throw that out there just because I know I, I will. What do you see yourself and this podcast becoming in 10 years? And it probably won't even be a podcast. It'll be called a cryocast or something. Um, uh, well, I mean, ulti cast. ultimately, I like to be the, uh, the biggest daytime talk show in the world. Talk show on what, what technology? Uh, teaching inspiration, bringing to light the most brilliant minds in the world, talking about how to optimize your health, your relationships, your spirituality, your wealth, uh, and... So you want to be Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, and Oprah in one. Yeah. Exactly. Younger, exactly. Jack, <laughs> exactly. Mario Lopez, <laughs> Ryan Seacrest, <laughs> all in one. Right, exactly, yeah. I mean, I want to be the hub of uh, inspiration, information, and education on how to optimize your life. In 10 years. I mean, sooner than that, but yeah. That's a good goal. Yeah. How much will you donate in 10 years? You got to put a number how on it How much do you want me to donate? I, I, this is your dream. You man. know, for me, I'm at uh, 50 million. I would say, uh, I would say a minimum of 15 million in 10 years that I'll personally donate. Mind you, there's but, inflation too. So 15 million in 10 years. But hear me out here. Okay. I think my true power doesn't come from how much I donate, but how much I influence other people to donate. For instance, I've only given a few hundred thousand to Pencil of Promise, but I brought in over 2.5 million from my relationships yeah you know you being one of the person that brought in the yeah. million so i think by having the the show and the, the the largest the one that's the most trusted you know when i bring people to an idea a person a product a charity i'll be able to create that of the show will be able to create that influence in taking action so that's where i see really the show bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars of donations that's perfect no yes. and we have to use our talents you so, know you are yeah. a great connector you're a great people person when I'm telling these Wall Street douchebags that they're douchebags, they're probably not going to want to donate. I can probably learn from you, but you got some of you Wall Street guys. They're such douchebags. I don't know. I don't know how to be nicer. I mean, that's sure, as sure. nice as I can be. That's like pushing. Not all. Me. Some of them are saying. Yes. A lot of them. Right, right. A lot of them. Right, I mean, I talk to more people on Wall Street than anybody, and it's time somebody calls <laughs> them out. So sure, I'm sure. not going to be the connector. I'm not going to be the one to influence. Mm -hmm. Although I think you know <clears throat> maybe yeah. I can guilt some of them. Exactly. Well, let's let's not digress anymore. Let's get back to the uh, the final question. Yes. But everyone can connect with you online. Stocks to trade. Timothy Sykes everywhere. Tweet us at Lewis House at the Timothy Sykes. The number for this year and ten years. And um, I want to acknowledge you for a moment, man, because I've known you for a long time, and so many people have 
a lot of negative things to say about you on the side, on the internet, the last questions. And anytime I hear someone talk about you in a negative way, I stop them because I say, listen, you don't know Tim Sykes the way I know him. He's got the biggest heart. Maybe he talks too aggressively. Maybe he posts aggressively. Maybe he talks about stuff you don't like. But this guy gives and gives and gives, and he helps thousands of people every year change their lives with financial freedom. So I want to acknowledge you for showing up in a big way, having a huge Jew heart that you have because you have all these Jewish hashtags. I make Jewish jokes. I'm you make sorry. Jewish jokes, but you have a huge That's my heart, man. And you are you're real to who you are. You know, you're real to your your message, your word. Uh, you're unapologetical, but you also know when to apologize if you know you do something wrong. Yeah. And I just think it's incredible that you're so unique, raw and real, and giving that uh, I really acknowledge you for how you show up and how you, you give back to the world. So I want to acknowledge you for that, my Much man. Much appreciated. Yes. Living the dream, baby. Living the dream. And we got one final question. Yeah. What's your definition of greatness? Whew. Greatness is, I mean, in one it, sentence. It's going to be a run-on sentence. Greatness is different for everybody. There's no one specific definition for, you know, it's not based on, on money or, or happiness or fulfillment. It's whatever you can do in this world, in your life, with the time that you're afforded and the talents that you're afforded um, as you optimize your talents, ideally, and, and try to grow your brain and, and skill set um, to just do what you can in this world and, and whether it's giving back or teaching or inspiring or making money um, or, you know, entertaining or skateboarding or painting or singing, we need to be more open about each other's talents and gifts. And we're all amazing. Hmm. We're, we all have amazing gifts and too many people are focused on specific outcomes like if, if you're a great skateboarder but there's no money in that or i guess now there's money in that there's money in everything now because you know the internet can make it big but if your talent isn't necessarily accepted by other people i mean i'm a good penny stock trader i didn't want to be i'm a good teacher i didn't want to be i never anticipated that but if you go with your talent you see what feels right and you take it all the way that's great mm. tim Sykes, thanks bro appreciate thanks. you thank you Thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking right here to subscribe because each week we come out with awesome, epic, and inspiring interviews and messages and videos just for you. So click subscribe right here to get notified of new videos every week. Also, if you enjoyed this specific interview, we've got a lot of great interviews like this that are uplifting and inspiring. So click right here to watch the previous interviews because the people I've had on are pretty cool and epic as well. So click here to watch previous interviews. Click here to subscribe. I love you guys, and I'll see you very soon.